Welcome, everybody, to the Onward VR Master League Season 9, Week 1, in a, what I would say, the toppest, the top tier matchup in this league, Globo Chem vs. SMC Tactical. My name is Nightfire with two E's. I am joined with my co-casters, Sleepy with two threes, and Noman with a four. How are the numbers doing, gentlemen? <laughs> Uh, we're doing good, Nightfire. I know myself, I'm excited to have my first cast back of the new season, ready to get behind the desk and see some of this top-notch adrenaline pumping onward action. Yeah, I uh, cannot mirror that that sentiment <laughs> more. I am pretty stoked to get back in. Uh, we're going to be picking up steam here in the next couple of weeks uh, on the casting side and on the playing side, and, and boy, am I excited for all of it. So let's, let's get to it. Yeah, it should be quite a exciting season and we're gonna kick it off with i mean i guess we're gonna end this week with one of my favorite matchups a matchup that's been in this league since almost as long as the league has been around smc tactical and globo chem is a very storied rivalry and it's always been exciting matches to watch sleepy we've cast tons of these matchups yeah are you, what are you looking forward to here today well, I'm looking forward, what I'm really looking forward to seeing is how the new Global Chem lineup is going to come out against SMC. Uh, Global Chem has been doing a lot of roster changes at the end of last season and even into the start and off season here. So they picked up a new couple of people. Um, <clears throat> I know Plots, I just saw an announcement that Plots has just been added mm -hmm. to the team. Uh, and then a couple of newer players who, ha who don't maybe have the amount of hours as some of the others on some of the other top teams but they have the skill to definitely back that up and they've got their global chem globes and their names now so they are official so i'm interested to see how that's going to turn out considering smc is kind of still the same strong steady lineup that they've had for a long time with the exception of trip now coming in as the newcomer and taking the reins as captain so it'll be interesting to see how trip's captainship even though it has been short leading up to this game will do for uh smc but i'm kind of thinking i i don't know I just want to see how this this first one shakes out because I want to see those new guys on Global and how they've been able to integrate them into their place. I think SMC's success in the early years of early yeah years of Onward and early seasons was attributed, in my opinion, a lot to their captain and their shot caller who was sickness at the time. He was very dedicated to the cause and very dedicated yeah. to hashing out strategies and plans, and you could see it sort of come to fruition with the SMC team. He had, you know, and it was very close with some of these plays with Trip at the head. And now Edna, who historically was a sub for this team, I believe she's now kind of one of the main five in the SMC rotation. Uh, I mean, I think that's two players. In, in comparison to Globo, they also have sort of this new team model a little bit. You know, Globo Chem always has relied on Thunder, Auto, and Wrath as their core. Mixologist always has been in there as a sub that they brought in when they need an LMG. But with SMC, to have Trip at the head, that's definitely a new feel. And I've heard that from, from sources that Trip's certainly been uh, putting in the hard, the hard, like the effort and the time on these scrims to really train this SMC team to be prepared up to go up against a, a squad like Globochem. Noman, how do you think this SMC squad is going to fare up against Globo today. So the interesting thing that I heard from uh, from one of the players uh, off camera was it seems like Pwn Cake is going to be uh, is going to be the sort of the back player now. Now he's going to be the Edna of the group. I think he's taken a little break from the game. He's been a strong player for them for many seasons, as many seasons as I've known them, um, and that's a that's a pretty big loss. I mean, yes, Edna is a strong player. Uh, Trip is a solid player. It's a it's a full lineup of great players. Mm -hmm. um, but you lose cohesion. When you lose one of your starters like that, it can be a little jarring. And so this being their first matchup, um, even even a not full strength, not fully synergistic Globochem, it is still Globochem. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a true test of, of what that roster change means. And it's on both sides. That's why I think this matchup is even more exciting for me is it's fresh on both sides you know, on both sides of the field. Mm -hmm. And we're, uh, I think we're going to see a pretty close game. I, I'm, I'm expecting to see uh, SMC put up a good fight. It, it is worth noting, based on statistics in regular season, SMC has yet to beat Globochem since season two. Yeah. Um, 
been, which is uh, a pretty long record to beat. It's been close in those matchups, and I, I think, I mean, speaking of, we have to get into the one that's coming up right now. Got to discuss pick bands. Sleepy, can you bring us into what we got on the uh, on the docket for today and what we're going to be playing in? He's falling asleep again, everybody. It's, his, it's in his name. You have to remember that sometimes Sleepy goes to sleep. It's just how things work out. I was being considerate and muting myself <laughs> between between my my chats. Oh, you okay? took a nap. We uh, all know it, dude. That's why it's in your name. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, is there a lobby app that I'm not seeing? Yeah, it's on Captain Trip. So yeah. Uh, well, uh, I guess I, I'll. I, yeah, Noman, can you give me the band? Yeah, Somebody, I was gonna anybody, say, yeah, give yeah, me yeah. the band. Yeah, we gotta, yeah, yeah. We gotta get let's, into this game. Let's get into this game. Uh, yeah, no, the band's coming out from the uh, SMC side. They are home. That's gonna be Turbine, the new map. Uh, they've been complaining of performance issues for some of their players. They don't want to chance it. Uh, so that doesn't surprise me too much. And then uh, another unsurprising band from Global Chem Suburbia. Uh, is the ban on their side. It is historically not their best map. Um, they, they, I think it's pretty much a regular static ban for them. I, I don't see them banning too many things against too many teams. So they're strong, no, they're nothing strong too shot on there. Yeah, sorry to interrupt there at the yeah. end. The, the, uh, Global Kim can definitely handle the map. Uh, however, what they can't handle is SMC on the map, it seems so far in their, in their history against them. SMC usually is able to take this map from Global Chem. SMC is a strong player on this map. They're a strong player on Cargo as well. Um, <clears throat> that does kind of lead so, us into our first map of the day, which is going to be Cargo. Uh, it is SMC's map choice, and so that's probably why they've decided to opt in for this as their first map of the day. I mean, let's just talk about those grenades, you know? I, yeah. if, <laughs> if anybody's tuned in last season, uh, or any of the last couple of seasons, Landon Jordan, uh, captains so, like the grenades yeah. that these guys have have dialed in over practice and time are just phenomenal um and it's it's the biggest thing i think global chem is going to be worried about i wonder how they're going to play around it but i won't have to wonder much longer but you will not we are hopping into round number one of map number one in this exciting series to kick off season nine on the defense is going to be globo chem the active roster, as you see there, Thunder, Otto, Mike, Crook, Raff, and Mixologist, and already some pre-fire down the long lane so that they can have one cross and get over on that far side. Yeah, not a lot going on real quick. Landed Jordan with that early pre-fire there to get his team across to those that far right side, but... Only one actually pushed across, just Mr. Beefy over there. A nice toss-up, which will get... I don't know if that took out the C4 or if someone coincidentally blew it at the same time. Uh, it could be that Global Chem is awaiting a kind of a more typical SMC pressured push from the center. Uh, but we're not seeing that tonight, Nightfire. We're seeing SMC taking a bit more reserved approach here on this objective. And while I'm not against it by any means, it's just kind of an odd thing to see out of SMC. Though, we have been seeing kind of that slower bit of transition between that fast and furious shock and all play style to this more methodical and thought out style over the last couple of seasons. And it's really worked out well for them. And now we've got some great smoke placements right here on the map. Yeah, I, the start of this round looked akin to a beginner's setup. They all were positioned back in the crates, waiting for any push, land and finding one, instantly downing as well, confirming that RAF kill. So no uh, holding on that angle there. Mixologist is still hanging out here and does manage to pick off Soda. Trip's gonna have to, Quick peek this, but the LMG fire and the cross angles do support mix, and two go down into the side of SMC. Now it's a 4v3, and Global Chem has shifted the odds just like that. So the West has fallen. I'm curious if SMC is going to try to fill that gap now. Uh, Mix has a good opportunity if they wanted to. I don't expect them to do this, but I, I have a feeling there could be a good little flank. It looks like Beefy's going to go plug plug that hole up in the defense, make sure nobody's coming through. But an interesting play there. Uh, Otto picking up that clutch kill on the on the, uh, trip. the assist for Mix, yeah, on, on trip. And it was a fantastic pickup that could have been really dangerous 
to get in on that side, yeah. uh, I don't know that Mike Crook would have been ready. Could, could have even been a cap opportunity if 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 Soto was the one there. Mix had gone down, yeah. I mean, just to be able to punch into that room and be a threat there. It's so hard to defend from Mike Crook with a really interesting angle, prone and on his side. Snaps through the, <laughs> the crack in the crate there and now SMC down to two. All on the shoulders of Landon and Beefy. Not two players you can count out by any stretch, no matter what the numbers are. And we talked about some of their equipment utilization. Landon still available. Mix does spot that out. Wow, a fantastic flash from Beefy over the top and a nice peek. Grabs himself a kill and slowly evening the odds into the favor of SMC. Now a 2v3. Hush on the battlefield here. Discussing the situation there. It seems like Beefy has a pretty good idea of where Otto is and I think that's coming from the downed body that he sees where Tripp's dead corpse is. There's only so many angles that you can get shot from there. And yeah, look at the pre-fire right onto Otto as he pushes into the crate. Taking advantage of the fire. It is information for Landon to work off of. And a big clutch on his shoulders here. The 1v3. Certainly going to be a tough one to come out on top here with the Globochem defense. But the positioning may lend itself to Landon picking him off one by one. If he quick peeks here, snags Otto. And is then aware of the potential angle Mike's holding. May be able to snap and snag too. But Mike peeking under. Just the, again, that tight angle on his uh, stomach on his side snags a second kill for Globo and a nice start for them as they hold the line and go up 1-0. Yeah, that was a great round. Globo Cam really denying SMC there. They did have a nice little push though overall. I like that position that Landon was taking, but I wasn't aware Mike Kirk would be able to get such a tight angle on that late, on that prone shot under the door, but... A good, good, good work from him on that one. My biggest gripe with that round for SMC, and I think what could have maybe changed the flow of it, is the lack of smokes. I, there's almost no smokes on the battlefield that round, and for a cargo match, I find that to be pretty rare. You know, it, it, it's the kind of utility that can blind an entire lane and really let you cover a lot of ground in safety. Like Mike Crook's position there was great, but very easily he could have been blinded by a smoke thrown at that green crate. And that, I, that could have absolutely opened up a new lane uh, for SMC to push up and pressure Thunder and Auto on that uh, east side. So we'll see if they utilize more of that or if I think they just prefer the frags. You know, I think they're yeah. just hoping that those frags at C4 clear early on definitely helped. It, that would have caught Landon had, had, he, uh, had that C4 stayed up. So, I, interesting play. We'll see how, how round two develops. Yeah, I was a little surprised there um, that Globochem didn't actually rotate to get the res onto Thunder. Uh, while I will acknowledge it was definitely a risky play, it's something I'm not used to Globochem doing. I'm, I'm used to them going I, for every res that they can. I don't think he was down. Was he down? I don't believe he was. Ooh. I think, I think he, he was, was just laying down in the corner yeah. at, uh, at the top of the They were all prone. Yeah. yeah, they were prone okay. down. Yeah. The IK looked like he would. He was downed and like twisted up on my oh, screen, well. so maybe that's why that's I the assumed IK. he was down. <laughs> I think that's what he wanted the other players to think. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Anyways, we're here now on round two of map one. It's Cargo. Now it's S or now it's Global Chem on the approach, and SMC going to try and defend. There's Mix already with an early pre-fire catching Landon Jordan with a beautiful headshot. A lot of pre-fire there. Raf also sending out some rounds. Mike Crook with the shield and pistol. He'll, he'll be here. He will be their forward uh, assaulter. And you can see Raf following him on the backside. And Mike's grabbing a nice angle here. Just trying to peek out. Saw Beefy cross. I and mean, I think Soda is going to be the real f kind of first point of contact for the SMC squad here. You can see he is trying to play forward. And if he decides to peek out this, Mike's going to see it. 
It's going to be information gained. Now they know Soda's here. Captain Soda's going to try and drop back. It's a super risky move here. With all these angles that Otto could potentially peek from and snag. It's risky business walking out your front door, Nightfire. Captain Soda, somebody going to pop off the C4 there, but it's not going to be quick enough. And Otto is going to snag the kill from the crossfire onto it. Oh, to Captain Soda and leaving SMC now with only three left. It's looking a little familiar to the last round. Bobo looking strong here on the offense. They've secured themselves a nice early advantage. Thunder also has his shield now. So they're running two shield users for vision, and clearly it's paying off as they are able to get the information they need. Auto snags another. It is just a down. They may be able to get the res, but. Auto being a huge threat here on the side. They will pick him up. Beacon. Trip going to fall back over here to the flank side and try and watch that approach, similar to how Auto and Thunder would watch it on the global side. Now here comes Raph making the push. He's got one on to Captain. He's going to come around the corner and find shenanigans, but he wasn't ready for Mr. Beefy, and Mr. Beefy will shut down this cap attempt. But now he's got his work oh, cut out for him. He's got a 1v4, oh four gosh. minutes left on the clock. It is not going to be easy for Mr. Beefy. No, he's got one on his corner, too, and then three across that long angle. They are all pushed up, ready and primed to push in. He does oh, it. Gonna do it. Oh, and he does right as he does. Auto pulls the trigger, snaps him out, and Global Chem take a nice 2-0 lead here on map one. And they must be watching this cast because those smokes came out, afforded that opportunity to push that lane, and you can see the kind of effect it had. I mean, just to be able to surprise the defenders by muffling your your uh, footstep audio is is enough. Uh, but that was a great play overall. Those early picks really working for for Globo and their advantage. And uh, I don't know, maybe not as close as I thought it was going to be. I, I suppose it's still early, but. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say I'd say it's still early, and and you know while SMC might have picked into this map as the home team, feeling confident and strong because they know that they are strong on this map. I don't know, maybe they underestimated Global Kim here, especially with the fact that they might be running, uh, you know, new new members. Which coincidentally, they're only running one of their newest members, which is Mike Crook Twenty One. The rest of the members in the Global Kim yeah. Global Kim starting lineup right now are veteran members, are well in you know well involved members who have been there for a while. So. Really, Mike Crook is the only one who's a bit newer, and honestly, he's pulling his weight quite fine. He's already 2-0, uh, not giving up anything for the team. Uh, so, uh, good luck on him so far. And, you know, SMC's doing well as well. Uh, unfortunately, they're just kind of getting shut off right there about mid-map, and, and they're not they're not able to convert past that right now. But I think they'll be able to get it in and, and get into gear here soon, uh, because we've never had a Global Chem SMC match where it's never been exciting. I was surprised uh, in that last round to not see Raph with a shield. We saw two other players with a shield and not Raph. What a, I mean, what a weird turn of events. Yeah, I don't, Thunder. I don't know if you guys felt that. Thunder's usually Thunder the over-the-shoulder uh, rifleman or the or the hard push. Very rarely have I Aww. seen him with the shield, but. And that's tough. They were trying to pass off a C4 on the side of Global Cam. It dropped and hit the ground, and, well, oh. we all know how that goes. Can't pick that sucker back up, so that's one C4 wasted on the side of SMC, or on the side of Global Cam. Meanwhile, SMC shenanigans picks up Mixologist with the early LMG pre-fire. Global Cam down one on their defense here. SMC going to have the advantage for the first time in this map since we started the, the match. For nice early pickup, not allowing him to cross. They didn't hold the traditional line down that lane, and because he pushed up and peeked out that doorway, he was able to snag the cross. Exactly how they needed to start this off. A nice nade toss getting pretty close to Thunder, but he's safe behind the crate door. Just barely. Good toss there. We should have the devs implement uh, destructible damage because that grenade would have shot shrapnel into Thunder Pilot so hard he'd be bleeding from every orifice in his body. Raph picks up a kill though across the map in the middle. On to Captain Soda, evening things out. It's now 4v4 here with just over five minutes left in our match. Raph dumping out a few nades too. Looks like he's going to get aggressive. Oh. Shots coming in. He finds one, not before Beefy also picks him up. So a bit of a trade keeps things even 3-3 three, three now. Yeah, now the the global chem or defense, I should say, is quite a ways off the objective. And sitting on the opposite side of the map, Auto kind of the only one with a real angle on the objective I mean, luckily, we all know that Global Chem is not one to, you know, 
not know when an enemy, when a friendly goes down and they have to cover the objective, right? There's Otto with Beefy after Mr. Beefy unable to connect with his early shots. Now Shenanigans is going to be trying to take some shots uh, onto the center of the map. Maybe he's just trying to cause some distraction here while his teammate Captain Trip pushes up. I'm not... <laughs> Trip, change your name back. Confusing me with Captain Soda. <laughs> C4 went off there as well, so... Probably no more C4 planted around here. Trip is pushing in here. He'll be threatening Mike's position shortly. Shenanigans also has eyes on, so if Mike does push out, he'll be able to tag him. But I think he's going to hold this line of sight, and Trip's going to be walking right into it. Yeah, Mike's got to check too many angles. Right here could be a good opportunity for Shenanigans to flank around to the other side and get the get the kill onto Mike while Trip is pushing up. Because, well, luckily Trip's going to wow. get a break there, and, and he's going to look right away. But Thunder Pilot's going to be looking at that area very, very soon. But no, Mike Crook will find it first. Shenanigans going to wrap around, try and find the kill, and he does, but it's a trade. And Global Chem take round three here with a 3-0 lead on map one. SMC really going to have to try and start getting things together here. They're going to need to get their ish together, get it all together, put it in a bag, take it to the ish store, and sell it. That's what, that's what SMC needs right now. Yeah, I don't know... I don't know, really know what it's... I can't even find the words to say it. I don't really understand what it is that's kind of falling apart for them. They seem to be losing them in these sort of dink and dunk engagements. I'm not seeing that level of cohesion that I'm used to seeing, that pushing up in one lane all the time. They seem chaotic. to be dropping back. Yeah, it definitely feels uh, mm -hmm. like a, I don't know, a be best effort. You know, it doesn't seem like they've got these plays quite down. Um, but we'll see if Global Chem can keep this up. This is, yeah. uh, this is a pretty tough map, but the objectives also matter. I think it's something we don't talk yeah. about a lot in casts. Um, but if you get a couple of objectives that, that can be difficult to attack and defend, or if you're not experienced with it, 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 it looks like you don't know what you're doing on the map, but yeah. it actually may not be that way. So, um, yeah. But SMC is not one to, to lie down. I think we're still going to see some, some action here. Oh, absolutely. I feel like Global is going to pull an ace out of their sleeve on map two and try and shut the coffin with a downfall since they left downfall on the table. And we all know Global Chem is not scared of that. And SMC is not scared of it, but they'll admit that it is not their preferred choice of map. They definitely like to keep things close. Uh, they don't like to spread out those ranges as much, uh, which makes sense because, you know, the longer the range, the, the less chance that you have to hit your shots, so on and so forth, affecting all other stats and accuracy and all of that other crap. So you got to be careful. But at the same time, with two high level teams like this, even though a team could be executing, you know, to the best of their ability on a certain play, the 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 high level of the opposite team could always make it appear as well as if it's not working. And so that's what I think SMC is going to have to figure out is how to adapt this now to work against the global chem defense or to adapt this to work against X defense or X offense or, you know. We'll see how they adapt as we hop into round number four with the pre-fire ringing out across the round. Here are the metal pings and that's sound suppression for you right there. You talk about the smoke causing an audio disturbance. This absolutely makes it hard to hear anything, any sort of progress. Raph crossing out and land and holding a nice angle snags one. SMC starting things off again in the in the advantage. Yep. Mike Crook will be our next advanced player up. He's got his way up into that far right tunnel there, the short tunnel coming out to blue container. There is a C4 laying on the ground that was well tossed, but I, I have a feeling Mike's going to be able to see it just too, too quickly and be able to take it out early and it not really be able to come into effect. But now Otto and Captain Soda are going to take a nice little trade. Captain's still managing to stay up. Otto going all the way down. Now it's a 4v3 here. And now a 4v2 as that gets finished off. Now <laughs> Thunder goes down as well with a trade with Beefy. And it's all up to Mike Crook and his shield against the three and a half man defense of SMC Tactical. Now four with the res from Landon. The push not paying off there for Globo. And I guess you can see how things can be... Uh how things can work out for SMC. It kind of makes you wonder, maybe it's just, I don't know. It seemed when I was watching Globo on uh, the last few rounds, they were playing really uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically aggressive for this tier of play. Pushing corners, charging corners, using that peeker's advantage, sure, but something that I'm not typically used to seeing here. Usually it's a little bit more slow and methodical, uh, but... I don't know if that's what caught SMC off guard. Maybe they've been able to adjust a little bit here. They're certainly looking a lot better uh, in this 4v1, and at least they're going to get 
in my opinion, on the board with this next round. Yeah, it does seem to look that way. I mean, I'm I'm not as familiar with Mike Crook's shield skills per se as you know maybe some of the other regular players who are in those comp lobbies, you know, on a, on a daily basis. But, uh, you know, if if the call has been made and he's rocking a shield on a global cam, he's obviously proved himself to be pretty effective with True. it. You know what I mean? Because uh, you they don't, they're not just going to let you go out there and, and rock <laughs> whatever it is you think you might be good at. Uh, if it's not going to help the team, because overall, that's what Global Chem really cares about is is the team performance more so than the individual, which is, I think, why they're so successful in most cases. Uh, and SMC's like that, too, but they're, they're, they're a group of characters, man. I tell you what, uh, they'll steal a kill out from under you anytime they get a chance just to, just to stick it to you. So definitely some varying personalities here, but not to say one's better than the other, because uh, each has their own benefits for sure. But, uh, yeah, looking like SMC should be able to get this... Uh, this point here and and keep from getting that that terrible terrible golden mm -hmm. goose egg on map one before almost catching mike out there got detonated a little bit before he pushed out to it i think he almost baited it. i'm pretty sure he wiggled his shield around on the corner to try and draw out that detonation <laughs> shenanigans is pushing up here with pat out and does draw shots from mike Yep, they've locked him in now. Beefy's on the rotation. He's got the back door closed. He's going to be trying to push up now and get the shots onto his back. And here he comes. Landon's on the push from the front. But it's not going to matter. Mike Crooks now tucks himself into that corner. He can't be come up from the back. They're going to have to push him, and it's going to be tough. If Landon has a frag, he could just kind of rainbow it over this container, and it might be might be good enough to take him down. Oh, boy. Now SMC's taunting them. You might should save that for when you're leading the series, though. Mike Crook now trying to keep alive here as he tries to push off shenanigans. Captain Trip going to run into the container. Still just a lot of teasing going on here. <laughs> he is in a, like we said, he's in a very tough spot. <laughs> and SMC are certainly uh, taking, taking advantage, advantage of that. Yeah, they are <laughs> in positions where it is going to be impossible for him to come out unless he really pulls off some miraculous uh, clutch play right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's now karaoke night here at the Onward Bar and Grill. First up on the mic will be Mike Crook, accompanied by Triple Nipple. And Triple Nipple, in a feat of sheer egotistical behavior, steals the mic and kills his accompaniment. SMC take their first point on the map, and the series now at 3-1 to one on map 1. Pretty solid performance there from SMC, managing to hang on to their uh, their initial lead. There seems like something they weren't, they haven't been able to do throughout the course of this series. They have started off most of their rounds with that early uh, kill advantage, and they just haven't been able to capitalize on it. And I think that round we saw what happens when they do capitalize on that early advantage and are able to sort of suffocate the remaining four uh, on Globo. Noman, what do you? Uh, how are they? What? Their approach last yeah. round on Marsoc was pretty good. Maybe now they have some momentum for this one? It's going to depend because, again, the objectives are coming into play, I think, in a big way. And I think this one is definitely, or sorry, that last objective, it has already shifted, yeah. was an SMC favorite. And I kind of expected them to win it. I think the question that it's going to come down to is really these early trades. Who is going to be winning these early trades? We saw SMC start winning them now. I wonder if that means they're sort of warming up to Global Chem's positions. They understand what they have to be watching because again, this is a new Global Chem, yeah. right? A totally new uh, approach to this game for both teams. So maybe they're finally starting to get their feelers in there. I, I don't know. I, I still give it to Global Chem on a defensive round, you know, many days of the week, uh, but a pretty tough fight here regardless maybe a lot of wins in a row for smc as we hop into round number five of map one in this series smc is the home team here so this is their map choice and the early pre-fire getting exchanged down the long lane soda winning there smc again with the early kill lead yeah and raf is a huge pickup as well he likes to run those flanks. We saw it in the third round. He ran a nice little flank and did get shut down by Beefy, but 
He's a danger to, to leave out on the field. Losing him early could mean they're going to slow up a little bit on this defense. Uh, they won't have that rushing capability. Won't be shutting down anything this round, that's for sure. Otto with a nice little tight angle. Evening the odds again. Of letting that early advantage go to waste there. Maybe not. It is information for them to I don't utilize. Really think they had an Nade comes in, that. in and it catches Otto, so they do go off those shots and grab one with a super long toss. Oh, well, here we go. Trip is now approaching Mike's position in the container, but he's not ready. I'm sorry, that was Mix, not Mike, uh, who manages to take down Trip. Thunder is going to get the res onto Otto, but Landon will take down Mix in the process. It's a 3v3, as we've seen pretty much the entire match so far. They keep trading kills. It's Basically a one-to-one -one comparison. That grenade's gonna drop down right behind as Captain Soda looks to peek the door and it takes him out. That was an amazing throw there from Thunder Pilot. Just the right amount of momentum to get it to fall off that ledge. Now they're looking for Thunder to take the peek. Landon, will he find the shots? Oh. No! Thunder will find Landon as well. And now it's quickly reversed from a 3v3 to a 2v1. Yeah, and Edna is a great player, but as I, as I was about to come to her defense, Mike Kirk finds the shot i that was a tough approach coming through the middle like that and committing to the middle almost entirely especially when you lose the tunnel and you don't have that flank on the west uh, it's tough you're, you're not splitting the defense's uh eyes you know they, they, they're laser focused and it's such a tough approach it may have been better to just rotate reposition regroup and push again uh but they'll have to try in the next map as this one goes the way of global yeah, that's right. I think I think they would have been pretty smart to actually throw in some some changing of pace there. Like to throw in some of that that old straight out, you know, and in say like round three or round five when I had the attack. To change things up a little bit because I think Global Cam was able to kind of settle into a groove there on their defensive rounds and that allowed them to secure points the the, the critical points that they needed was those defensive rounds. But at the end of the day, you know, these are two of our top teams. So any one of them could come out at any point, you know, on top at any point in this matchup so far. So we'll see. Uh, we'll be going into our next map here, which for those of you at home uh, will be quarantine. So a good map for both of these teams. SMC, I would say, is just a little bit weaker on it. However, they made great strides in improving that over the last couple of seasons. Uh, but uh, but Global Chem will be a hard one to dethrone here, in my opinion. Yeah, I think uh, Quarantine's an interesting selection. SMC certainly isn't it isn't their weakest map that they could have picked into, in my opinion. I, as we discussed earlier, I feel like Downfall may have been a uh, more sound tactical choice, but maybe the Global Chem of now is not uh, as comfortable on the Downfall uh, of now as they used to be. I don't know. Quarantine certainly is a staple of theirs, but SMC, as you have said, have been improving on it quite good, quite well. So I do expect them to put on a good show here, and they do get that Volk advantage to kick things off. I think that quarantine is like a um, who you know who's feeling it the most kind of map. Uh, and if SMC started to hit their stride, maybe they'll find their way here in a bit more of a long-range engagement. You got to think about the players that Global Chem is missing, right? They're missing Arsenic, uh, a top top tier sniper. Yeah. Uh, they're missing Toast, a top tier mid-range player. It's, it's tough to make up. The rest of the players are great. The new pickups are solid in those positions, and I think that's why they're there. Um, but the cohesion on small maps matters a lot less than on these large, sprawling, you know, quarantine downfall esque type maps. I think that may be why Global Chem opted not for a downfall. Downfall requires a pretty hefty amount of coordination. I think SMC could still uh, could still have it in in a bigger way than Global Chem might. I, I don't know. It, it's a tougher map to get newer players um, situated on, in my opinion. Yeah, I would agree with that absolutely. Um, yeah, Nightfire, you made a lot of good points with. With Global Chem losing their their sharpshooter in Arsenic and their two point man runners in in Pants and and Toast, it is going to be a little tough for them to rework their 
their uh, Q1 and downfall strats because those are some key players in making making those key picks on certain parts of the map or at certain times throughout the map to where it's really important to the overall push and not having them. And it'll be interesting to see how they kind of adapt and, and who they use to cover those positions going forward. But with that being said, it looks like we're getting ready to hop on in to our first round here on map two. Global Kim will be starting out on offense and SMC taking the defensive side, trying to hold on and get their points where they can and try and turn this series around to take the win. We'll see what happens. Will indeed, Raf. Quick to peek the hill as they did have that fast north spawn. Doesn't catch anyone crossing. Everybody diligently and quickly moving to their spots, not uh, questioning or wondering where they should be going. And that's an important aspect of this map, at least with some of these fast spawns. If you sort of wander around and don't have a, uh, a plan on where you're going to go, you'll get picked off pretty quickly. And Mike Crook nearly snags one with that 12 times on the sniper. Yeah, that M14 yeah, yeah, is nice a guy. heck of a weapon, but, you know, it, it is a skill set that's kind of difficult to pick up and be very good at. You know, you had Arsenic, you've got some other guys in the league who are some really killer snipers, but it's not an easy task. I mean, even with a pro tube, it doesn't become the easiest of tasks because though you might tie your hands together and have this solid mount under your hands uh, replicating a rifle, you, you know, there's still a lot of physical mechanics in there as well, right? You still have your arms, which have to control the motion of that. And they can still be shaky. You can still have those nerves, that adrenaline pumping through you. Um, that can really cause you not to be able to hold your weapon steady, even with, you know, those those things that have been produced and made, like the Pro 2 VR stuff uh, that can help you with your game. There's still a lot of aspects of you that are required to still make those shots steady. So it's definitely not a, a, a an easy skill to pick up. So anyone who's running those 12Xs in these matches... I give a lot of props to, especially if they're they're able to execute with them. Because if not, then obviously it's a waste of points and a waste of a of a person on the field. But if they're they're good with it, like Arsenic was, for example, you know, it it doesn't detract from the overall effectiveness of the play. If they're good with it. They could catch out auto slow crossing in this street, but since not a lot of people opt for that sort of optic range, to cross at this sort of distance is incredibly hard to spot. And auto prone, taking his time super far back on this street should go pretty unnoticed i don't think they have any coverage on this far east side right here so they'll invest on sending this guy all the way around to the dunes and eventually he'll have a presence on the south and it does look like globo is posturing to sort of collapse around this objective uh together at once and that's something that has not changed in many seasons and many roster changes uh, we see it in a lot of the top tier teams and it's where that practice and coordination is really shown and and so far they're looking good I mean we're on first round we're gonna we're gonna give everybody their benefit of the doubt but I like this setup I like the way that they've covered all of the main streets and exits they've got a sniper on the overlook they've got a flanker in the south I mean it's pretty textbook in a setup I'm just wondering if SMC is gonna be able to read it in time yeah, they have some interesting defensive positionings over on the side of SMC. Some pretty far off angles. If Landon doesn't react appropriately to a certain type of push, if uh, shenanigans in the back doesn't react accordingly, they could easily lose this objective uh, in pretty quick fashion. So they, I'm, obviously they are aware of that. Uh, they've invested Trip into the burning building as that's a super important staple of this uh, defense on this objective. If you lose burning, things can really go sour, sour uh, quick, but they have only invested one there, so this global chem push may be able to overwhelm trip with numbers. Yeah, and Otto's now finally pushed his way from the south ridgeline up into the ambulance courtyard. I think he's going to be trying to support that effort on the burning building to help clear out that path for his team. He's also looking down the street towards the west there, trying to catch anyone who might be rotating back onto the objective, maybe to, to protect it from closer range. I do see Otto rocking that 203, and yeah, there it is, firing that 203 right in the doorway where Trip is. Luckily, it looks like Trip able to escape the, the effects. But uh, I think that's the first effective M203 grenade shot that I've seen in competitive play yet. And it was accurate, too. He put it right through that door, it looked like. Raph trying to be a threat in the front of the rubble. So sending those shots out does give Trip information, and he has been pretty loud on this movement here. So Trip should be aware. Maybe he feels confident with that M203 coming inside that no one's here, and the trade between the two inside. Both are resible, both are making callouts. 
Yeah, well, only one is going to have a player nearby to get the res, and that'll be Thunder Pilot to pick up Raph. But Trip able to get the call out at least out to his team before they knife him. Two in the center burning, so now his teammates will at least be hopefully looking that way. But no, it looks like they're actually going to rotate their, their remaining defenders back to try and watch. Captain Soda does find auto in the south, so that's a good pickup to even things out a little bit for SMC. Global Chem still in the lead, though, with a 4-3 advantage as they approach the final objective. Just a minute left. Raph now takes down Captain Soda. Look at the push coming in here. Thunder grabbing shenanigans. Land in the last one alive, trying to get a reload in. He's into a 1v3. Nades come out, and they could hard push objective. He realizes it, presses out, and Globo snagged the kill. And the round kicking things off on this quarantine match in a dominating fashion. They are really looking good right now as a team. It's impressive. Yeah, it's my mistake to doubt them. I mean, that was as good of a global chem play as I have seen in the, you know, two years I've been playing and casting this game. I, they haven't missed a step. I, really, what we're going to have to focus on is what, what did SMC do wrong there? And I think uh, from what I was able to glean, those defenders out in the west that they lost, yeah. the two on the long crosses, not effective. Nope. Just not, not uh, hitting the shots they needed to hit. And honestly... They had no efficacy in in watching the back of their teammates. You always kind of want to keep your players somewhere in your field division, or at least in the possibility of your field division, um, because if they go down, you want to be able to to cover the approach of the enemy that is definitely going to be coming from that angle. And uh, those two defenders in the West, they they seem kind of like a last resort, uh, similar to what Captain Soda's position was originally. And uh, I think they planned for a last resort, uh, last resort a little too early in that match. Yeah. You know, I questioned that defensive positioning early on when I saw how far they were from objective. And they only invested really trip in defending burning building. And as soon as that went away, things started to go south. They had the freedom to push into that courtyard with the two others on the, uh, on the north. And... The defense just collapsed for SMC under in, in this really coordinated push from Globochem. Now SMC has the opportunity to demonstrate if they also share in that coordination as we dive into round number two of map two. Yeah, it'll be a tough one for SMC, though. They've got a longer haul going here from the start of the round. They're going to get the pit spawn, or crater spawn, whatever you like to call it over here in the northeast so they've got a long way to trek before they even get within sight distance of the objective and they're gonna have to approach from some pretty long angles that more than likely excuse me sorry got the bit of the hiccups there in the middle of that uh global cam was more than likely going to be ready because until they've identified the spawn global global are going to be looking for those key angles to try and identify where someone might be pushing in order to better set up their defense for the later attack run but Right now, a pretty solid defense from them. They've got most of their men invested directly near the objective or within sight of it. Their last guy is up in the west watching that far western flank, and he'll probably catch, I'd say, maybe one or two, depending on if if SMC is ready for it. Mixologist, the one over here in the far west. Yeah, this is a very different defensive layout in comparison to that of uh, SMC. They have invested much more in the forward Defense. You have Thunder over on the south to help defend from the south approach. You have two invested in Burning Building, Raph at the Rubble and Mike on the stairs. And Otto's here in the courtyard. They don't want to surrender this early footing because they know, once it's gone, how easy it is to push in and win, as they demonstrated in that last round. So they don't want to give up this position here. And their defense shows. I'm curious to see how SMC is going to deal with this. And deal with it, they'll have to. I like that far west position. It's a cheap way one defender can watch essentially two lanes, a, a full cross on two lanes. In fact, they might actually be able to see into some of rooftop courtyards. It could be even up to three different areas from one position. It, it, it's a strong spot. It doesn't require uh, a lot of investment. It's a safe position. Uh, though it is checked, it's easy to to duck out, you know, and, and uh, reposition from there. So I, I kind of like it, and I feel like it's going to be effective here. I'd be surprised if he doesn't find himself a kill. 
It is effective. It does have its downsides of being pretty far out there. And so if things don't pay off for his four teammates uh, on that forward defense, it is going to all go south pretty quick. He'll have to rotate. Be a tough position to rotate out of. But that is assuming that Globo loses the four up here in the front. does seem like, honestly, if they invest in that west push, it's going to be their best means of attacking this defense. They'll be able to sort of be have the backs of a lot of this defense and really only have to deal with Mix, who is holding that one lane. If they get past him, things are looking well, good. Beefy is about test. to cross. And first test has been failed. Mixologist gets the kill. However, that will give SMC defense the intel that he's over there, so Landon will be very cautious in crossing this little opening, but will Mix repeak it is the question. They're yes, going to be... be waiting. Wow, he was even pre-firing that. Actually, you know what? I think he was trying to confirm the down to body, and Landon peaked as those shots were going out. Does manage to Damn. trade, but Mix does have comms. So that position that he's in is still incredibly useful. He yeah. still has the line of sight down this west lane. Yeah, he just basically became a radar tower for Global Chem on the west. He can see a good portion of the roof. He can see that approach from the west where he capped Landon from. He can see down by the Sarlacc pit where he killed Beefy. I mean, he has got some really good eyes for this position for any sort of western approach. But I, I feel like the west is Wonder built up a little too much for SMC to push anyways. They're going to need to use shenanigans here, or I'm sorry, Captain Soda, to help pull some of the attention this way and keep it over in the west in order to let those guys that are moving up in the south to, to get into a better position to effectively attack. But it looks like now the center burning has gotten wind of the south because it looks like all three of those defenders are already looking that way. Grip sending off some shots. Tried to land them on, I believe it was uh, Thunder who was in there. And actually, Thunder rotated around for the res. Jeez. Quite a long rotation. A pretty heavy investment, honestly, to pick that up and... It does open up a little gap in coverage for these two down yeah, in the yeah. south. If they do move now, they may be able to capitalize on it while the other two are rotating from the uh, west. And I don't think they're going to be able to execute, though, oh. because I feel like as soon as Trip makes that push out of this building, he's going to get taken down by... No, he's actually going to find Mike Crook first. The the stairs in the center burning go down. They have an opening here. They need to capitalize. Shenanigans and Trip need to put a little aggressiveness into their step. Because they've got walking room all the way up to the objective. No further defenders nearby. Closest one is north of the center burning, and he's on his way back. So the longer they take to do this, the more and more time that the defenders have to get back and watch. Looks like maybe a res coming out for Mike Crook, actually, which will make things even worse for this south push. Both of them are up on the corner now. Smokes are out. Grenades coming over the corner. Flashbangs, grenades over oh. the corner from Global Chem. They're trying their darndest to keep them off the corner. Shots ring out. Trip can't find anyone. His own smoke's playing against him here. They've utilized them and pushed in. Now Trip's trying to capitalize, trying to charge forward, gets scooped up, and it's all down to the lone ranger of SMC. Shenanigans finds one. Can he get another? No, he can't. He's scooped up from Mike Crook in the second floor. And Globo Chem, in a commanding defensive uh, fashion, push their lead up 2-0. Well, uh, over, you know, actually, I want to hear Noman's thoughts on that while I think about my analysis of that round. <laughs> That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> well, so that, that mixologist position, I think, played a big part in it, uh, as, as we had expected. Mm -hmm. He was able to get those, uh, those suppressive shots, slow SMC down a little bit, find that pick on to Landon. I mean, it was a big deal for him to just be able to make those callouts, let alone find the few picks that he made. Um, and then what I really liked about the the Globo defense is how as that developed, as SMC got closer, you saw that they constricted towards the objective. They did not leave anything to chance. They did. It's not that they didn't trust each other, but they definitely wanted to make sure there was coverage and they closed the gap as they had more intel about where SMC was going. And that's something you don't see very often. You, uh, we kind of saw it with Landon there in that last defensive round uh, in the first round of quarantine where he he was still out in the boonies. You know, Global Chem was already marching its way through, had found a few picks, and he was still out 
uh, in that sort of last standish type position, um, you're starting to see the, the stark contrast in the teams uh, in rounds like that. Yeah. Yeah, those are all good points. Uh, and yeah, that mixed position really killed it there. But uh, real quickly, before we jump into this next round, I want to say thanks to everybody who's been out there joining us in the chat. Also, big thanks to Firefist, who has donated like six subscriptions in tonight's matchup to various folks in the chat. So big thanks to him. And of course, thank you to everyone who's out there tuning in. We do appreciate you. Huge shout outs, huge shout outs. Diving into round three, Globo Chem versus SMC Tactical. Map number two, if you're just tuning in here, Globo has taken map one on cargo in pretty dang commanding fashion. Four to one overall, and now they lead on their map choice. Two to zero against SMC. SMC on the offense, investing a few more in burning building this time around, but shots already ringing out. It looks like those are going to be from shenanigans here as he presses a push up from the eastern side, but it won't be enough as Mike Crook has the angle and takes him down. Does take some fire from the center uh, burning building there. Almost gets picked off, but manages to stay alive. The shield user now pushing forward. He's going to be their primary uh, cross. They'll draw, he'll draw the fire out, and then Mike's going to take the shots with the sniper. Yeah, and so does not is kind of giving up that look. Landon will find Otto. That'll be a nice uh, answer back to that initial shenanigans kill. Soda's at really risky here. He's backed up a little bit. He's gonna put himself at an angle where he can be shot if he's not careful. So it'd be a very tight angle, of course, but not one that you wanna give away just freely like that. Oh man, Raph is popping yeah. around all over my screen. Caster bug. Soda is going to have his flank exposed pretty dang soon. He's got to be wary of this crossing, and he is checking to see if anyone's crossed, so he may be under the assumption that nobody has yeah. made it south yet. I'm going to flank that objective here quick. Nope, he's uh, realized it. <laughs> yeah. He just told his team exactly that. He knows that shenanigans went down. He's aware that there's contacts over there. He's calling out. He says, I'm going to get flanked here at my position any moment now. So SMC, this will really determine to me how they're how their defensive plans are working if they're able to take that radio call and act on it make a plan and kind of execute and, and accommodate uh for this terrible position that captain soda's found himself in now um uh, that will show the real test of a of a of a modular and fluid defense lots of shots ringing out rap across the street they tried to pick him off on there the shield push coming in from thunder Maybe a threat to Soda eventually, but Soda's really not going to risk peeking out here. He's going to force another angle. A nice flash up and over, and Thunder charges forward. Gun out. Does find Soda with some good shots. He abandoned the shield, went with the rifle, and now he's pushing Landon's on objective. Dead. Yeah, it's a 2v4 here. Beefy going to try and toss a nade up over the hill. It's going to be in the Thunder Pilot still behind cover at the wall. They've got complete control here over this objective, and that's going to be it. Here we go. The rush is in now. Thunder Pilot on the objective. He's got Tablet out. He's going for the cap, but oh. it doesn't matter. Global Cam will take the kill and take a 3-0 lead here on map two. SMC only been able to put up one point thus far in the series, so they really got to get things going here in this next round and for every single round after that if they want to be alive in today's series. Yeah, that was... Uh... It might be one of my favorite plays I've seen so far. I, I, I guess I should say this season. We're, we're, we're going to start fresh, clean slate this season. Plays from last season don't count. Don't at me. Uh, but that was a great play. I, you, we kind of missed it in the shot calling there, but I loved what happened. As Thunder had pushed that wall, we saw Beefy toss the nade. He started crossing to ambulance. He was coming back to defend. And Mike Crook from the hill was able to find the sniper kill onto him. I mean, he caught him right in the lane there. And I don't know if it was just everything was happening too quick. They didn't know that they had somebody on cap, but that was so clean and could have easily been two points in, yeah, you know, yeah. in any other situation. Yeah, that definitely uh, could have been the map. Right it was there. a fantastic pick by Mike Crook, and he is showing in a big way uh, why he is on this Globo squad right now. That was a huge play by the team as a whole, but that, that play by Mike is probably one of my, my current favorites. Yeah, no, that was a that was a great play and an overall really effective push from Global Chem overall. Mike Crook's early pick on the shenanigans really helped them open up that southeast. Uh, Thunder and uh, Mike then pushed that southeast, having Raf kind of covering the street and eventually coming over to join them. 
I mean, and then, yeah, from there, and then the rest of the team kind of handled business on the top side. Raph getting a couple of those crucial picks in the middle to help alleviate some of the rotational pressure. And then, I mean, as we saw, that could have easily been a cap there, and that could have been map two done and dusted, wrapped up in a nice little tidy box for Global Chem. But it wasn't. So thankfully for SMC, they've still got a chance to put up some points here on the board as we head into round number four here on map two. SMC on the attack, Global Chem on the defense. A tall order for SMC to come out of this one on top, and especially with this objective, I feel like Global are going to have a pretty dang secure hold on it. It's going to come down to if they can find the early pick like uh, Global Chem was able to on their offensive rotation here. But Mike, with the sniper on a huge angle up over the roof, grabs a long rotation trying to cross the street, proving uh, uh, that's the first time I've really seen any threat to that long rotation. He's looking for another kill. I hate giving this spot away right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Crook actually just voicing his concern. That is hilarious that we catch that on cam. He hates giving this spot away right now. He's exposed a really nice angle on that long cross, and it's going to be tough now for SMC to get across that street without being noticed. Southside glass moving around east. Wow, Mike grabs another one, and that's two with the sniper yeah, I mean, here. Absolutely crucial. He's given up this angle. I mean, week one of season nine, and he's going to be giving up this meta-changing angle, unfortunately, uh, for him because it's a casted match. But um, those shots are ridiculous. That first one, what, 15 seconds? Even if that inside the, the round timer? Jeez. Really impressive. Smoke's coming in here. Auto laying down a suppressive fire. He does not want to allow anyone out from this corner. Who is that back that's that's being trapped by a sniper and LMG fire now? They've had to invest two smokes just to get out of there. I think it's shenanigans. He stopped right when uh, I think it was Beefy that got picked off at that first it. shot by... Um, Jesus, now I can't remember his name. By Mike. And... Uh, yeah, and he's been held up at that rock ever since. He's not been able to move. Finally. No, he's not. Somebody else. Ooh. Wow. The team fire coming in on the BP there. He tried to peek that angle. And in typical Globo fashion, they're looking to strangle out SMC. They have the momentum. They're up 3-0 on this second map. They're trying to take the series and not let SMC put a single round on this quarantine uh, map. And... I, oh, Landon. Oh, my. I know you want to get the picks to help even the play balance out, but I think you would have had a shot had you not shot and gave away your position in the West. Yeah, look at the and, look at your mini-map. Everybody's turned their attention to, and focus to this side now. He could have maybe even snuck in for a cap. Yeah, he could have. He could have. Well, what he could have at least done would have been to push further south, wrap around the gas station to the back side of that building, the ambulance building, uh, took down Mike on the plane wing, and then the rotations from the other defenders might have been just long enough to give him enough edge to get into a position where he could fire on them well, and actually take the take the approach. But he is managing well, to find some picks. He's now found two, and the other two members of Global Chem just don't seem to want to poke their heads up. He's listening to you. He got Mike on the plane wing. He snagged another out on the street, and now he's even the odds just a little bit into a 2v3 here. Yeah, but now he's going to need that help from uh, shenanigans there in the north to help try and draw some of that attention back away from him so that he can make moves. They got a lot of time, 2.30 on the clock. Yeah, good bit of time left to make the play. Mix is looking for the pick. Landon's trying to look for the, the pick on him as well. This could be dangerous for Landon. Well aware of the time restraints they have left on the round. They know what they need to do and how to enact it. It's just a matter of if they can execute their plan. Bananigans is going to be a key element. As you said, they need that attention to be drawn away from Landon so that he can shift out and not be trapped in this gas station corner. All he has to do is make it by this one open spot to get behind ambulance building. After that, all he's got to do is manage to pick Raph across the street, and then it's an open objective. They'll be The defenders will be on a rush. Wow. Or they won't be, because uh, Otto will be caught on a rotation trying to position himself better for the possible attack on the objective, and he gets caught out by Landon in the middle of the street. Now it's just Raph and Mix defending for Global Chem on this very difficult objective, and now Landon's in an even better position to be able to make that cross. 
How does Shinomi does not have this angle right now? He's looking right at the stairs. You should see Mix peeking this. It, uh, it could depend on what headset he's using. If he's on a CV1, there's a possibility it's quite blurry right now. Yeah. Oh no, he went to throw his tablet on his back and he threw it over his shoulder. Oh boy, caps out of the, the question. Last man before. Yeah, oh, well that, yeah, I guess that's a point. <laughs> I guess you need that for caps, don't you? <laughs> Yikes. Oh, he went to check and he realizes he doesn't have it. Well, it's all kills now, shenanigans. Shenanigans. Managing his noise production quite well. He's not going to just give away his his approach here, but at the same time, he doesn't really have, well, the time to, to, yeah. to do what he wants to do here. He's going to have to kind of keep on a, a forward press here as he goes for the kills because it's his only option. We know he has no tablet. Whoa. He finds Mix. Now it's going to be the caution for Raph. Will he be able to find Raph in time? He's got 26 seconds now on the clock. He's making his push. He's pushing up along the burning he, wall he here. He's going cap. towards us. He can't. He can't threaten the cap. He has to find this kill. He has to find Raph to his left, and he does spot him. Shots come out. 13 seconds left. It's 10 seconds now. All we got, and we're down into a gunfight here. Raph's going to chuck a grenade out around the corner. He's going to pop out here. Which way is he going to go? Is he going to go left? Is he going to go right? Will Shenanigans see him? The free fire is coming. Raph is going to be popping out, and Shenanigans oh does find him. Oh, my gosh. Not in time, Globo. Oh. Get the round by the skin of their teeth, and that's the series. SMC cannot get on the board for map number two. Wow. I was so busy watching the shooting that I didn't even notice the time was out. Wow. What an excellent. Mm. Well, so I mean, uh, what I've got to say about that round is Mike Crook's scary, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what, what's the deal with Mike Crook and how scary he is? That was some fantastic play, fantastic shooting by him. Couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, that spot is, uh, I don't think it's meta-breaking. Uh, there's there's quite, those of us with the long-range prowess <laughs> have known about these some of these angles for a while, but he executed them, and that is the key. To make the shot is different from knowing the shot exists. Um, right. That's a great play, and... I mean, overall, I think that was uh, decided near the, the second or third round there, right? That Global Chem was really kind of taking hold every round, no matter how many they were down. They had the positioning down. They had the cohesion down. Uh, there was not a lot of things working against them there, and, and they were able to mop that up. I'm, I am surprised, though. I did call for a, a cleaner... Uh, sorry, sorry, more um, closer fight between the, these two teams, and we didn't quite get that. Um, there is still the, the third round, so there is still the opportunity for SMC to redeem themselves a little bit in the eyes of MMR. You know, um, I think, uh, if anything, we may have maybe in our all our heads undervalued how, much, how hard Global Cam is going to be coming into this season. Uh, we saw some roster struggles, which is very uncharacteristic for the Global Cam team. I think that may have skewed some, at least in my perspective, on how they were going to be performing this season. You know, we saw them not uh, perform how they may have liked to in the uh, in the final the semifinals, but here they are looking like a terrible, terrible threat to the top teams in the top ten. They're looking just like the Globo of old, and they are the strength and the way they're winning. The the it's just. It's almost a, the strongest I feel like I've seen Globo. Mm, I agree with some of those points, um, but I don't think I agree with all of them. Um, Mike is doing a fantastic job, as we've mentioned now many, many of times. By the way, do any of you guys know if he's single? JK. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, yeah, they've been. T he's really earned that Global Chem Globe pin on his you know, username in the Discord and so on and so forth. He's definitely earned that, especially in his performance here tonight. But um, yeah, I don't think anybody really expected that. And Nightfire, I definitely agree with the point that you said where we underestimated Globo's approach to this first of the season. Uh, and while I wouldn't call them roster, like, change-ups or, or, like, oh, shake-ups per se, just, like, you know, things just had to happen because they had players leaving and 
you know, Globo not the one to make those choices quickly and just pick up any old person. So they've definitely been vetting folks. I know a lot of these guys have been in lobbies with them in the last few weeks playing and scrimming and, you know, practicing with them. So seeing plots come up today on as a new member of the Global Chem roster wasn't surprising. But here we are in round one of Tanker and the shots are already coming out. Landon's managed to find one. But Raph's going to shut down the middle push here. But no, it'll be Captain Trip with a shield. Shit. One managed to secure Raph down. Global Cam now down at a disadvantage on a 4v3 push, but this is tanker, so that doesn't necessarily mean anything per se. Wow, Mixologist with the hard peek on the corner, and the action has been across the board as Thunder scoops up another and trip in a flash is down to just himself. Back to Mixologist as he pushes, catches him out in Globo quickly. Grab round one and their defensive wow. round for this tanker round. This tanker map. Did I? Did I? Did I blinked? Did I miss something? Was there, yeah. was there a play that happened there? Holy cow! <laughs> I, I mean, that was <laughs> hard to track. I'll say that yeah. as a cameraman, I had my work cut out for me on that one because the action was fast and rapid. Yeah, it was. It really was. And I think this has come from SMC and Global Chem playing each other on this map too many times. Uh, Globo or you know SMC tried a fairly fairly standard tank tanker strat for them, which is pushed down fast and hard with shield pressure, uh, trying to just blow their brains out with a storm of hailfire. Um, and Global Chem was just ready for it, and li like we saw, they shut it down and they shut it down quickly. However, it seems like I don't know. It, it almost feels like SMC is a little deflated here as yeah, well because well. that round timer shot off before we even had a chance to really give any sort of. Uh, it's hard um, to keep your uh, <laughs> your composure. Yeah, when Globo is is when you get beat like this, especially for a team like SMC, they're they're not new players. They are experienced players. They've played hundreds of hours into the game. To get beat like this in this in a game that you've invested so much time in is tough to deal with. Yeah, it is. And and against the team that you know that you're capable of competing with. Yeah. Right. Like I I, I had that same kind of mindset when Danglers would play SMC and we would just never be able to 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 beat okay. smc for whatever reason even though we definitely had the skill and we had the teamwork to do it we we could just never get it done for whatever reason or the next and it was always so frustrating after we'd lose those first two maps uh to know that there's really who can, you know it's like who cares there's nothing we can really do and everyone would just kind of deflate a bit and it's and it is frustrating so i can definitely see where smc's mind would be at with that uh and the kills are just coming left and right uh <laughs> Mix Rez is Thunder, but Shenanigans takes him out again. Auto and Mix then find Shenanigans. Now Captain Trip and Raph pushing their way in. And once again, Global Chem with a fairly quick, I'd say about a minute and a half push, if that, take down round number two. I mean, there's... Choo-choo, yeah. the Global Chem train has left the station. This is a steamroll. I, I, I don't know. I, I have a hard time... Uh, having anything against either of these teams i've played them plenty i respect them a lot i respect their captains i respect their play uh, smc's been practicing but i cannot see it and i don't know what it is i sometimes your best just isn't good enough and i know that's you know a, a weird saying but uh, they're feeling themselves they they're getting in here that coordination in, uh, with that shield play, Mike Kirk on the oh. shield and Auto with the gun, unbelievable. I mean, they were they were just I'm walking down that hallway like they owned it. How do you, if you're in the gold or silver division, you're aspiring to wit, to to be a champion, to be the number one VRML team, to see Globo play the game like this, it's got to just strike a little fear in you. I think I said it best when I said they're scary. <laughs> they are they are coming out hot. Uh, it's week one. I'm gonna give them that. It's week one. They could be feeling themselves. Sure. We've sure. got a lot of matches. We got the rust you know, off like for a, SMC too. To their credit, they had, yeah. they had a couple of good rounds, a couple of close uh, pushes on cargo and quarantine there, but ultimately just couldn't execute to that final degree and. We're gonna hop into round three here again, wasting no time as Globo try and shut out SMC again for map number three. Poor shenanigans. Getting robbed of that kill under Wrath in the end of Q1. It looks like the chat's finally caught up with that round. 
Yeah, we're three deep in this one already. <laughs> That's crazy. Anyways, SMC on the push up the up the main deck. They're not wasting any time. They're going straight for it. Frag out over the middle. Does grab auto. Raph ready and waiting. Will Landon be able to take the pick? No. Beefy going to find that instead. Oh, Ooh, and the nade. The quick chuck nade from uh, <laughs> Raph before he goes down manages to find two. But the res will be there to be able to pick. Should be able to pick up both here. There we go. I'm starting to understand SMC's struggles here. <laughs> <laughs> Communication is a real vital uh, component in this game at the top tier. And if your comms aren't smooth, it can affect the play. Thunder here trying to crap, uh, catch out Trip. Trip just yells everything yeah. so he doesn't have to use his radio. Well, it works. Landon <laughs> picking off Thunder and now... It all is up to the hero. Mike Crook goes up against the shield, does find him, and now he's got one uh -oh. for himself. That's oh. Uh oh Wow. I didn't even catch it. Wow, Soda with the cap there. The sneaky, breaky cap as we're following the action. Holy smokes. Wow. Probably should have came out with that, though, in map two. Not ones to be shut out completely. That play worked pretty well. Uh... <laughs> I, I say pretty well. They did get the cap. Uh, there was quite a bit of confusion there in the beginning uh, on on that nade pickup and <laughs> Tripp's uh, scream callouts. His neighbors must love him. Oh, right. Um, <laughs> but uh, but overall, I, it's exactly what SMC needs. It's, it's, it's not a question of want. It is need at this point to take an MMR hit like they might uh, from, from such a... <laughs> A, a devastating score line. They cannot have that in week one. That is a, a tough ladder to climb, and every step you lose uh, adds quite a bit of, of effort on your part to make it back, and and uh, they, they definitely made it happen there. I, going into a defense round on this objective, I don't know. I, I'm hard-pressed to say that Global Camp can't do the same thing right back to you. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Uh, at the same time as well, it's it's just, uh, I, I wanted the scoreline any closer. It is tied 2-2 right now, the first time. For this map, I'm talking about for the the series, Nightfire. Come on. But it is what it is. That's what happens. And, you know, to your point, Noman, for, Global, or for SMC to take a loss now, it's going to be much better off for them than it would be if they were to take that loss, say, in the middle of the season uh, and then have to use... A, sh a truncated time period in order to be able to climb back up that ladder. So taking that loss here before placement matches are even up, um, better to do that than to, to take an L at the end of the season or late in the season and have to try and make that miraculous challenge everybody and their mother and their cousins every week to try and get enough games to build up the MMR to even place back in the top, you know, top eight, top seven. Ooh, a nice nade coming in just a bit too long over the heads of Thunder and Mix. They are aware now of Landon's forward position. Might not be safe there much longer, although he's pressuring it here. Flashes out. Might have caught in Thunder and Mix out. A nice nade from Beefy. Snags Mixologist, and it's Global Cam on the back foot on the offense. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see a push come for that res really quick. Auto's moving around up underneath. He'll probably be trying to... That, ooh, Thunder does get the res on Mix. Mike will take the pick onto Mr. Beefy using that shield. Things melting away here for SMC. They're already down one. Five minutes left. Global came with a lot of time on the board still. Landon going to be the next point of contact for SMC here. Eyes on where he heard those shots from Mike Crook, but he doesn't have the angle. The great door blocking his vision. Rat may have seen him out the window there, though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Ooh, but a nice play from Landon as he hears the rotation coming out on his flank. He's not going to be ready for Rab, though, as he runs out of bullets and as he goes to change his mag. Oh. He dies. A nade into the like... hands of uh, Thunder ended up team killing uh, one of his own. So unfortunate down there. And Bobocam losing another as shots ring out on the opposite end. And, well, we're into a 2v2. 
Yeah, 2v2. Trip now getting a bit aggressive there on the backside, poking out, looking for that angle, but he needs to be careful because now Otto's got the shield and well, I, I can't say that I know that Otto is a dev a devilish, you know, death dealer with that shield on, but you know, he is a very talented player with a lot of hours in, so you can only imagine as a member of Global Chem that he is put in the time to at least learn and be somewhat competent at almost every weapon or attachment that comes in this game. I can say Raph is certainly devilishly good at the shield, and he's got one oh, in sure. his hand, so he's pushing up alongside uh -oh. Thunder with these shields, and it's going to be tough for SMC to deal with this. Nades flying in. Yeah, and they're both going to have rifles as well, as they both started as rifleman classes earlier on, so they're not going to have to, you know, oh. utilize just a pistol to get things done if they don't want to. Really textbook push here, sending smokes out to deny vision through the windows. Raph pushing up shenanigan with the knife! Oh, that was a rob and a half if I've ever seen one. That looked like a knife yeah. on my end, but... Trip running in, yelling out numbers, trying to throw off any potential caps happening. He's well aware of the threat that does exist with the cap, and as he runs in, Auto pops him in the back, and Global Chem keep pushing their lead up 3-2. Yeah, and there's there's what I'm talking about. They they can answer back in kind. You camp, they don't lose a step. And honestly, they don't have to. Them losing a map doesn't quite mean as much as it does for SMC here. So I'm not super surprised. Um, but a great play. Again, the shield coming in. Uh, clutch. A real, a real clutch shield play there. I, I am as bummed as sleepy as that knife didn't go through. I wonder what that was. I, it, it may have been just uh, it was going through the shield, and that's not allowed. Uh, but a good play there by by Raph to to shoot underneath, right? Keep your <laughs> keep shield your, up. Yeah, keep your shield up, and uh, you can use your gun any which way you want. But it's going to be a, that much harder for the defender to get you. I, I think he was expecting a gun over the top of the shield, not probably, yeah, not that knife. But uh, a good play overall, and yeah, Global Chem here looking to seal the deal in this final defensive round and they've got the objective i i don't know this one i feel like i i might even want to call my shot here and say smc could cap this one yeah. and take it away from globo it is it does lend itself to that the far east uh top side objective uh, a lot of smokes i expect to see that from smc if they play it just right and they can cause enough confusion they could still take this back yeah absolutely they can definitely still pull it out here i've seen smc dominate this specific objective before not necessarily against globo chem uh however they have definitely have some plays for this one but globo chem's pretty pretty knowledgeable about defending top tier teams on this objective i mean danglers were probably one of the only team that globo chem would have to face for a while on tanker before some of the changes were made and then you know and they were the ones to have to defend against on this quick type of aggression on this particular objective. And I think Global Chem has been able to kind of find a find a tool, something that helps them work with it. But we'll see as SMC's on the attack. We're already here. Round six? Yeah, round six on map three. Auto will find Trip early on with a headshot. Nice early lead for Globo to get things rolling for what could be the Map Decider as a nice nade from Raph comes up and over. Beefy able to find a frag on the Mixologist. And Shenanigans looking for picks in the center. Raph here trying his luck at a bit of aggression as he pops out of the crate, but doesn't find anything with those shots. And SMC quickly whittled down to two. That three. Shenanigans on the rotation picks up Soda. That early pick going off. Globo also down to four, so maybe SMC can do something here. First time SMC has sort of paused <laughs> in this series, I feel like. They always have been continuously applying the pressure onto Globo, or at least trying to. Maybe that's why Globo has found success in the early maps. Now, adjustment being made. We'll see if it can throw Globo off enough. 
allow for another pick here. That's what they're looking for, trying to force out a rotation and grab themselves be able to even the odds. Well, they definitely have the time to do that, Nightfire. I mean, four minutes left. They, they're not hurting on time, but that's going to hurt. Raph finds Captain Soda, and that'll be the LMG Gunner for SMC down. So some of the suppressive aspects of their play might not happen. Shenanigans, though, will find a nice little pick up top on Mike Crook, and they overlook. Now Thunder Pilot's trying to fight off Landon Jordan from his approach. Raph and Shenanigans will trade, and that'll help Landon, but unfortunately, it would also hurt him at the same time as both of his players are down. Well, Thunder Pilot's... Oh, did Thunder just flash auto? Might yeah. have. Landon changing fire with Thunder here in the crates. Neither one of them landing shots, and it is a 2v1. Auto and Thunder, the historic duo from Globochem, going to be a tough one to break through for Landon here, and we'll see what he can come up with as he has another 315 to work with. Plenty of time. Absolutely plenty of time, and... You know, going up against the brothers Globo is no easy task, but here comes the push. It looks like Otto's going to get a little frisky here. Oh, yeah, Landon's hurt it. He's definitely hurt it. He's going to pop out and try and get the aggressive pick, but he's not going to find it. Thunder Pilot's rotated himself up now onto the top deck. He's going to be looking down, trying to find that long pick onto Landon. Ooh, and Otto will find the angle instead. He takes down Landon Jordan and Globo Chem. We'll close out the third map as they have the other two in the series and take the series. Uh, well, I can't add it up. It's like four, 12 to three, I think, is the total score. Yes, that is correct. We're on map and wow. over here. Yeah, come on. We're casters. Don't expect us to math. That's why we have a nice pretty board to show you <laughs> what the score is. Yeah, that, I mean, not a lot to dissect there. Uh, Global Cam really just not allowing what I <laughs> had anticipated to happen. They did not even get within 50 meters of that objective. Um, really just holding on to that dominating play all the way through. Uh, a fantastic series, honestly. I loved watching those plays. I loved uh, watching Mike work. I'm excited to see the rest of his, uh, his action in the rest of the season. And I'm excited to see how SMC rebounds in the next couple of weeks. I expect to see some good challenges uh, coming out of them and, and some really good games. I don't, I don't think they're gonna let this uh, get them down. Uh, but the uh, trip trip's got a little bit of work to do, so we'll <laughs> see if our caster captain friend uh, it can can pull them out of this rut. What do you guys think about that series? Well, I mean, overall the series was it was a good Exciting. series. Let's let's not let's not you know take that away from them. SMC, while not able to take the win, they were definitely playing well. I didn't see a lot of foolish things per perhaps in the game like not not a lot of moves where i was just like oh my god what a what a dumb decision to make right uh i didn't see any blatantly obvious mistakes there uh i think lobo is just more prepared thus far for the for the early season and you know we we're giving trip a little crap here because he's got a lot of work to do and and that is true i do agree with you there however at the same time i want to try and keep in mind that trip also just gained you know captaincy of the team not long ago so Trying to give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt there, but yes, absolutely 100% Noman, I agree. He definitely has some work still to cut, cut out for him in, in making that SMC squad just turning out those wins like we know that they can. He's just catching flack because he's a caster. He, he'll do it to me, so, you know, that's that's where that's coming from now. They, they both played well. I expect to see great things out of both of these teams. I'm not disappointed in the game at all. Nightfire, what did you think? Yeah, an absolutely uh, exciting kickoff for this season, to say the least. I I'm looking forward to what Globo is going to be bringing to the table. We'll have eyes on them pretty thoroughly throughout the course of the season, as goes for SMC Tactical. I think they did put on a pretty good showing, because Globo really looked like they were in great form. And when you go up against Global Cam in great form, they're hard no matter what. It doesn't matter if they've had one or two players subbed in, as long as that player is in line with the Globo Chem motto, uh, it's just going to be so hard to dethrone them. So I do feel like, despite the scoreline, SMC certainly put up a good fight. Um, they're going to be, a t they're obviously going to, I think, going to be a positive contender in the top 10 oh, yeah. this season. You know, I, there's no doubts about yeah. that. Despite the roster changes there, they still seem very strong. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. I mean, and they've consistently been a top-tier team now for, what, like five seasons running? Right. I mean, it's it's nothing new to them. 
but there are a lot of teams coming in new to this new to the league this season and you know those are obviously wild cards they're unknowns we don't know i mean teams that might have people who are new to the league but have been playing forever and they come in and they just start wiping wiping floors with people now while that is a bit unlikely against teams like global pen and ssc danglers some of the ones that have been around for a long time now uh it's definitely still a possibility so we all have to be kind of on our toes as far as watching those new teams and players because not only will they you know be new people that you're unaware of but they're going to possibly have ideas and 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 plays that you've not seen before because maybe they're not used to watching the the defined meta of onward and what teams to work best and what seems to not maybe they're trying things out on their own and that could throw you for a loop and end up causing you to to not play as well you know i mean we've all had it right we've been in a comp lobby uh playing against a team or scrim team and they're not playing the way we're used to. it's like it, it throws you off so you got to be careful with that but yeah I think Global Chem's looking solid for this year. Definitely keep an eye on Mike Crook. For those of you out there, he will be looking to shoot you in the face from a long way away. And of course, SMC, I don't think they're in any threat of dropping out of the top 10 this year, to be honest. I don't think so either. I do think we are going to wrap it up for today with that. Thank you so much for tuning in this afternoon, this evening, this night for the Sunday fun day that is Onward VR Master League. As we've mentioned before, get ready for a ton of casts this season. We're onboarding some new casters that you'll be excited to see behind the casting desk. And it's going to be quite an exhilarating Season 9. Dare I say, the best season we've had with Onward. I'm going to throw it out there because I just got a good feeling. I think some of the new, new uh, units that are coming out uh, are going to be great. And uh, I'm excited to see how that's going to shift the meta. Some new maps involved here in our picks as well. I mean, it's it's an exciting time to be playing competitive onward. Tons of new teams. Uh, I, I can't wait to see what we get with Season 9. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We are signing off with that. My name is Nightfire with two E's. My co-casters, Noman and Sleepy with two threes. Thank you for joining us, and good night. <laughs>